All right, everyone, it's time. Finally got all the pieces that I need to put together a bracketless panel conversion kit. So I've got a pump it up center panel switch frame here, a set of 3D printed sensor channels. I'll go neatly into this frame here. Got a set of blank polycarbonate panels. Sits right on top. And I've got the final piece, the DDR panel arrow art decal that will stick to the panel. And now I've got a bracketless DDR panel conversion kit. This bracketless conversion, this is something that I've been wanting to do for a really long time. And I've just, for so long, I've been so back and forth about it, deciding whether or not I should actually go through with it, uh, trying to weigh the advantages and disadvantages of you know, putting in the work and gathering all the parts that I need to actually do this. And since, since I'm not going to any arcades anytime soon, arcades still aren't open, still in the middle of a pandemic, I haven't gone to an arcade since March. I have not played actual DDR since March. And I've been playing a lot more uh, Stepmania ITG lately that there's really no better time to do this than now. So I guess to answer the inevitable question of why go bracketless? In order to answer that, I'll have to show you how the original DDR panels are configured right now. All right, so this this is what uh, original DDR arrow panel looks like. You've got, of course, the panel itself, the polycarbonate panel. This is the this is the part you gotta hit to activate the sensors. Each of these corners are going to have uh, a bracket that secures the panel in place. And you notice that uh, I don't have brackets on these two corners here. And that's because in order to play charts that have a lot of brackets in them, I can't reliably uh, nail those brackets down with all those layers in the way. As you can see, if I add these layers here, like the brackets and the screws here, that's two layers of things that my foot has to go through in order to hit the panel and activate the sensors. Because you've, you've got the screw, you've got the bracket, you've got the panel, you've got the tape and foam L bracket before I hit the sensor itself to activate. And there's just way, way too many layers with the uh, old original design. And when it comes to tweaking the sensitivity of the sensors, of how much pressure that you have to put on the panel in order to activate the sensor, usually people raise the arrow by adding some foam and tape to it on each of the L brackets here. So on the inside of the arrow panel, you've got the four sensors here, the L brackets on top of the sensors. The sensors sit inside a sensor channel and these L brackets sitting on top of them have a couple layers of foam here on, on my setup and then I stack some gaffer tape on top of the, the foam on the L brackets. What that does is it adds layers to raise the panel up more so that my foot, when it hits the panel, it doesn't have to travel down as much to activate this sensor here. Or if I'm hitting in the corners here, uh, it's gonna hit either this sensor or this sensor or this sensor, but if I had all those layers getting in my way, like if I had uh, the brackets and the screws uh, getting in the way, um, 
you can only raise this arrow so much before it starts to starts to stick down because what happens is if let's say let's say I still had this panel in and uh, I'm raising and raising and raising the arrow to get uh, better sensitivity if I added too much tape to raise the panel and I secure these brackets down and screw them in what's gonna happen is that the arrow is going to stick it's gonna stick because of all the pressure that's being put down on the corners and onto the sensor and if there are a lot of layers trying to push up on the panel and the corners are trying to push down on the panel it's like you're constantly putting force on the arrow and you're going to have a lot of uh, undesirable effects. You're not going to be able to activate the sensor reliably <clears throat> and it'll get real annoying when you're trying to play and you start getting misses because the arrow's just stuck down. But with a bracket list set up here, you don't need, you don't need the corner brackets. That's that's not a that's not a thing that you need anymore. Because what's gonna happen when you install the the bracketless conversion kit, if you want to try to raise the panel and stack some you know stack some tape on top or something um, on top of the L brackets here, you're not gonna have the problem of the brackets trying to push down the panel because there aren't any. So you can raise this as much as you like if you want to get it uh, flush with the metal here um, or if you want just a little bit of recession you can you can better tweak that with a bracketless setup here. You don't have you don't have to deal with the brackets getting in the way like if you want to step on the panel uh, you don't have you don't have all those layers to go through you there's actually more surface area to hit now on the panels you can hit this part of the panel and uh, be able to activate the sensors because before with this configuration, you can't you can't do that because uh, this you're not going to be able to activate the sensors if you hit this part. But if you have the bracketless setup, you'll you'll be you'll be able to do that. If you hit this part of the arrow, you can set up the sensor that way, and that's just uh, that's an advantage for uh, being able to play charts with. Uh, brackets and it'll make bracketing much easier to do. I will say that the main disadvantage is that if you have all four of these uh, screwed in, uh, it's going to be a lot more difficult to you know pop the panel out if you need to take a quick look at what's inside uh, to diagnose any uh, sensor issues. Because right now, right now I can kind of just this panel in and take it out whenever I please but if I go but when I go with the bracketless uh, setup if I have all four screws in here uh, I'm gonna have to undo all four to be able to see what's going on and that's the that's really the only disadvantage that I can think of at the moment but you know, I think overall going with the bracketless setup is it's going to be a much better playing experience. Okay, so now what do I have to do to get this, all of this out of here and put the bracketless solution in? So first thing I would have to do is I would have to undo all these L brackets here. They're all secured by these screws on the side. They've got these 3D printed brackets that hold the L brackets in. I would have to undo all of those. I'll have to unplug all the sensors here, remove all the sensors. On every corner here, there are these rubber stoppers and there's this one, there's like this one main hole. I don't, I can't remember if I have to undo all the rubber stoppers, but there are these screws here. There's three on, each corner. You either undo the one one main one or undo all three of them. And 
once you get all those unscrewed, you can just pop that entire thing out. So you can pop the switch frame out. Uh, the, it's an entirely metal switch frame. And you can just get that out of there and then put that in here. And I, I guess that's another disadvantage that uh, I'm remembering just now is that the entire switch frame that's installed in here right now is made entirely of metal. It's completely solid. This this thing here, this is, this is plastic. This is a pump it up center panel switch frame. It's made entirely of plastic. I don't know how sturdy this thing is. It, it's probably sturdy enough, but it's definitely not a uh, solid metal. Uh, so that I, I can't, I can't say for sure if that's an, an an actual disadvantage. I think that's all you gotta do to get this whole thing out and I would have to do that for all eight panels. So I think the plan first is I'm going to apply all the arrow art to all the blank uh, polycarbonate panels, get, the, get all the decals lined up and make sure that they all look nice. Before I undo everything in the pad, get rid of all the L brackets, uh, unscrew the, the switch frames, uh, unplug all the sensors. I'll show you what that process looks like. I have a short little series on my DDR restoration project for another cabinet that I worked on. You can check out what that process looks like in that video as well. I've applied a couple of decals to panels already, and I've got to tell you, I am not too impressed with the quality of these decals and uh, how they turned out. I thought maybe the first one was kind of a fluke. Maybe I messed up something, but they just, I don't know if you can tell from the camera, but it just looks, it kind of looks like really splotchy from all the from all the bubbles and I've I've even tried to take like a, a, a card to you know smooth it out flatten it out try to get rid of all the bubbles but it's I don't know I don't know what's wrong I think it's maybe the quality of the, the decals that I got and uh, they don't even come with the like a white vinyl protective backing this this panel this one uh, I custom printed and it's got you know, this white uh, protective backing and this this one uh, did not come with it you can see on the old one how much smoother it looks it looks brighter much sharper very few bubbles from the first time I've applied this many years ago and then there's this. Maybe maybe it won't be so bad from like far away or maybe it'll get better over time but after after first applying them they just it just doesn't look so great. Though thankfully they seem to be able to rip off pretty easily um, so if I decide to I'm kind of tired of how they look I could get them printed from somewhere else and get some higher quality prints and replace the arrow art, but for now, um, these will have to do, and just gotta apply the rest of them. All right, so I've got all the bracketless panels assembled and ready. All I've got to do next is just uh, open up these panels and uh, take everything out. Um, I think I've already explained earlier what exactly I need to do to get everything out. So yeah, let's just uh, get right into it. to an unexpected problem. The screws that are supposed to secure the switch frame into the stage 
um, are not the same length that, that I need to secure the new switch frame in place. These are M5 by 10 uh, metric screws. They are supposed to uh, go in the corners of the switch frame to secure them in place, but they are just not long enough. They're not long enough to catch in the, in the holes that are supposed to keep the new switch frame in place. So uh, I don't have any longer M5s. Uh, so I'm going to have to figure something out or um, see if I can quickly order a set of longer M5s. Uh, if I'm going to if I'm going to do this, I just I got to be able to do it right. So I, I got to get the right length screws. So I will I will try again um, once I get those in. Right, I just got the new screws in uh, much quicker than I had expected. Uh, these are M5 by 16 millimeter length. Uh, the original screws that I had that go with the that are for the old frames are only 10 millimeters in length, which is not long enough. But these uh, fit perfectly fine. And uh, I made sure that they uh, fit fine, uh, just tested it out, um, put the uh, screws in the corners to secure the frame in place. So this, this one, so this, this whole panel should be all set. All I gotta do is just put, put that on. Uh, screw that thing in and uh, yeah, then I'll just take care of the rest of the one player pad. I'm only just going to do one pad uh, mainly because I want to be able to test it out and make sure that I actually like it before committing to doing the work on both sides. So I will be back after that. All right, I'm back and one side of the bracketless pad conversion is done. Everything seems to look okay on the surface here through some uh, play testing that I've done uh, shortly after doing the conversion. Um, I do have some concerns, concerns and issues that I want to go over that I encountered while, while I was doing the conversion and while I was testing this out. So first let's open up uh, one of the panels. We'll take a look and I'll show you what I mean. I think the reason why the panel seems to get raised so high is because of this, this 3D printed sensor channel here. When it sits on top of this, let's take the topper off here. So we'll take a look at um, how the sensor sits on this channel. So. Let's look at the sensor channel here. There's a lot of height to that channel, a lot more than what a normal sensor channel would have. So given that this thing has an ex that extra height, this sensor is going to naturally uh, sit on top much higher than it normally would in a regular sensor channel. So with that extra height and on top of uh, top of this, the topper on top of the sensor gives it just a little bit more height so that when this uh, panel sits on top, it's going to be raised much higher than it should be raised. So if we compare that to the second player side, which still has the original frames and the original sensor channels and all that, the L brackets, this sensor channel here, this is the original sensor channel, it's uh, a rubber channel. If we take this uh, sensor out for a moment, we can take a look at how this channel is set up. So this, this channel here, on the inside, it's not raised. There's not a lot of height to this uh, sensor channel when you place it inside. So when you place the sensor in, it's going to sit pretty close to the, um, the bottom of the frame itself. So it, it doesn't really sit that high on top of the frame. So when you add the topper here, which would 
in this case be the L bracket, it's gonna be pretty level to the corners here. Um, obviously I would add a little foam because it doesn't have, uh, it doesn't add enough height normally. So I would have to raise the panels with some foam and tape to get the height I want. And even then it would still stay a little recessed. But in the case of the uh, one player, in, ca in the case of the bracketless setup over there, it adds too much height because of how uh, this frame sensor channel combination is set up. It's just naturally raised too much higher than the original setup is. Additionally to the height of the sensor channel, notice that the sensor just kind of moves around. It doesn't, it doesn't stay in the channel, like it doesn't stay in securely. Like the old rubber sensor channel would keep the sensor in place, keep it from moving. And having this topper on doesn't exactly help with keeping it in place. It's still kind of free to move around and if you're stepping on it, it might have a chance to move the sensor around. And the worst case scenario is that if you move the sensor around from stepping on it, the wire might might shift around. Uh, and what could happen is that the wire would shift over to this corner and accidentally crush the wiring, and thus destroying the sensor wire here. And you would have to splice some new wiring or something to repair it. And that's not ideal. So an aesthetic concern that I have with uh, this panel here, where I got it printed, it didn't come with like a white vinyl backing, like, like this X arrow, X style arrow that I got printed. This white backing kind of helps make the panel light up uh, and look nice when the lights come on and it shines through the panel. The white uh, vinyl backing kind of diffuses the light and makes the uh, arrow look really clean and look really nice. But without the vinyl backing on this, it didn't come with any. It kind of makes the panel look look a really messy when when light shines through and it, and it doesn't doesn't really look very appealing. So even though this conversion didn't turn out the exactly the way I wanted it to, and despite all the issues going into this conversion, um, I had to at least play test it and see how it would perform, even though the conditions that I mentioned weren't exactly ideal. And uh, it was, it went exactly as I expected it. There were a lot of issues with uh, adjusting my form for the raised panels. I tried playing with um, all of the timing windows on. It set off decents and way offs uh, very frequently. And I got a lot of misses from uh, held down stuck arrows. There were a lot of uh, misfiring problems as I expected. The impact just, it didn't feel very crisp like the original design. Overall, it was just not, not a great experience so far. I guess to see if I can improve this setup, I, I want to go with the original rubber sensor channels, replace the 3D printed sensor channels, and see if the rubber channels and the height difference allows the panel to be recessed and be at the ideal height that uh, I want it to be. That might that might take a while for that to come in. So this project might be a to be continued 
series. Well, I did I did learn a lot from trying to do this conversion. This was something I wanted to do for a long time. And of course, uh, no project ever seems to come out perfect. So I think uh, that's gonna be it for this video. Uh, if you learned something, if you enjoyed it, uh, if you liked this video, please hit a like. Please subscribe to my channel for some more arcade dance game video content. Uh, I'll see you guys um, uh, in the next video. Bye-bye.